Hi everybody, welcome to my video all about Comet Leonard C2021 A1 which has only recently been discovered and could, I say could, be a good comet later this year. Well, come on, we all need something to look forward to at the moment. Anyway, let's have a look and see the circumstances of this particular comet and uh, see what it might give us later in the year. Okay, there it is, Comet Leonard, taken by Philip Romanov on January the 6th. The comet itself was discovered three days earlier, on the 3rd of January, by Greg Leonard, which is why it's called Comet Leonard. And it's got C, 2021 A1, because it's the first comet discovered in the first half of January of this year. Now, the comet is between Jupiter and Mars at the moment but it's heading in towards perihelion the closest to the sun so it is approaching us and it will get closer to earth and by the 12th of december it's going to be at its closest to the earth and that's going to be just over two and a half million miles from us so that's when we hope it's going to be a nice naked eye object it will certainly be a great binocular object and a great object to take images of now it could be around fifth or maybe fourth magnitude but hey it's a comet who knows and that will be in december and january although by january it's going to be in the southern hemisphere and we're going to lose it from sight but i'll take you through the circumstances and show you what exactly what we might expect to see of course nothing can be guaranteed with comets it reaches perihelion on the 3rd of january so that's when it's at its nearest to the sun next year and at its brightest is going to be low in the west after sunset for us so it's going to be really low down in the twilight but it hopefully should be visible but easier to see is going to be in the eastern sky before dawn during the month so uh, i'll show you what you need to look out for so here's the path of the comet throughout the year so this is january to november this year and you can see it does a really slow circle around the sky you can see here's the constellation of booties the herdsman over here here's canis venacity the hunting dogs and ursa major with the seven stars of the plow here or the big dipper as the american friends call it okay so that's the comet and that's the path of the comet throughout most of this year this is the exciting bit down here but we'll come to that a bit later here's the two pointers dubai and merak and you can see that it goes directly between those two on the 11th of may 11th 12th of may so it should be easy to find although it's going to still be quite faint by then but how faint it will be who knows so there it is that was where it was on the 1st of january first of february you see it's not really moved that much it's quite slow and ponderous in its motion and each little tick mark is 10 days of motion so you can see how it's moved in 10 days so by march it's there april may june july august september october november and the 27th of november you can see just how far apart these tick marks are becoming so here you can see the motion of the comet has started to pick up quite a bit so it's moving a lot further in those 10 day intervals than it is towards this part of the orbit one because it's getting closer to the earth two it's getting closer to the sun so it's accelerating as it gets nearer to the sun so that's the path of the comet throughout the year so it could be quite nice to watch as it develops i don't know the magnitude it is at the moment but it's probably about 17th 18th magnitude so it's really really faint and will be a nice challenge to uh, pick up but it should be good to watch it develop because that's going to be in a really nice part of the sky for much of the year until later in the year when the plow gets a lot lower in the sky and that's going to be our problem anyway we'll come to that in a second okay so here's the path of the comet during november and december and I've changed it now to two day intervals rather than 10. You can see just how quickly the comet's starting to move. So just to orientate yourselves in the sky, this is Canis Venatasi, the hunting dogs. Bertis, the herdsman over here with the bright star Arcturus 
down here as well it's going to be really low in the sky um, after um, sunset but uh, I'll show you that in a while so here's the comet on the 1st of November 1st of December and you can see how it's accelerating as it gets towards this part of its path 10th of December it's passed just above Arcturus on the 6th and 7th of December uh, and then you can see it's really whizzing as it approaches the Earth and closer to the Sun and then this is the path of the comet during December you see just how wide and expansive sky it's going to move against and just to uh, familiarize yourself with some of the constellations here here's Canis Venatius the hunting dogs here's Bertes the herdsman this is Fucus the serpent holder Scutum Sagittarius Capricornus so here's the comet's position on the 1st of December 12th of December when it's its closest to the Earth it's in a fucus so that's when it could be potentially at its brightest 15th of December so the middle of December it's going to be to the left of a fucus and then the 30th of December it's down here and it will only be visible in the southern hemisphere and you've probably noticed the problem this is going to be in December Sagittarius is a summer constellation of course in December the Sun's in that part of the sky so this yellow arrow shows the path of the Sun between the 1st of December and the 31st of December but really we shouldn't be surprised because the comet is approaching perihelion the closest to the Sun so it would be close to the Sun and that's why it's only visible in the twilight okay so let's have a look at the rest of this path down here just to finish it off for those in the southern hemisphere so here it is it's in the constellation of micros microscopium the microscope so here's where the comet will be on the 26th of december on boxing day 1st of january 3rd of january which is when it reaches perihelion and then the 15th of january 1st of february it's starting to slow down you can see these are really long intervals just two day intervals but you can see just how fast the comet's moving and then very very quickly it starts to slow down that's because it's heading away from us so it's we're looking along a line of path so it's going away from us so we don't see much motion at that point and then the 28th of february that's where it is but we're going to lose it long before that so what are we going to see the age-old problem with comets 22nd of november looking at about five o'clock in the evening towards the northwestern evening sky there's a few constellations here's the plow and ursa major here's bertes and arcturus and there is where the comet will be it's fairly low down in the sky so let's done this circle around here because the plow is getting lower and lower in the sky as the year progresses so does the comet okay on the 8th of december the comet will be here so here's Bertes, here's part of the plow and that's where the comet's going to be so it's going to be really low down in the twilight about five o'clock in the evening just after it gets dark okay there's Bertes, the herdsman serpents could put the serpent's head and here's a fucus the serpent holder and it's going to pass through those constellations of course here's where the comet was on the 22nd of november so you can see it's moving in that direction so it's really not going to be um, much above the horizon during december in the evening sky so it's going to be moving in that direction so it's going to be a challenge in the evening sky so here's where you need to get up in the morning set your alarms later in the year and get up in the morning because you stand a better chance of seeing the comet in the morning sky because it's going to be a bit higher because of the angle of the path to the horizon so if you get up on the 7th of december about 10 to 7 should do it look towards the east in the morning before sunrise you should see vega spiker and arcturus you've also got mars here as well and of course arcturus 
is in booties and that's where the comet's going to be on the 7th of december it's just outside it here so here's serpent's kaput and here's a few so remember we said it was going through those constellations so here's where the comet's going to be on the morning of the 7th of december so not too far from arcturus so if we find that lovely orange star arcturus shining away in the eastern sky you should be able to find the comet with binoculars or a telescope or even the naked eye which would be great and it's moving in that direction coming through serpents kaput and Ephucius as well so if we go out the next night as long as we get a clear night of course here's the comet it's moved a little bit further down in the sky night for december it's moving a little bit further down it's getting closer to the sun it's getting a bit more active hopefully it's getting brighter so i've used a bit of uh, artistic license here and i've shown the comet getting bigger and brighter on the 10th of december it's moved a little bit further down into the head of the serpent uh it's getting bigger and brighter hopefully you just don't know with comets uh but we hopefully it will do and then the length a little bit further down so it's getting lower and lower each morning hopefully getting bigger and brighter and on the 12th it's a little bit further down it's in the serpent bearer itself and then on the 13th of december i've left it a little bit later i've gone out about 20 minutes later uh, just so that the comets nucleus and coma is above the horizon at this stage because then it will be uh, below the horizon at about 10 to 7 so we have to wait a little bit later when the sky is a little bit brighter for it to rise up but hopefully if it's got some really nice tails it might be visible for a few days afterwards even though we can't see the head the coma and nucleus we might be able to see some bright tails but hey you know, who knows it's a comet it can behave in any way it likes so that's what we hope might happen whether it does or not remains to be seen it's a comet after all if you want to know what's happening up in the sky go to the sky diary which you've made available on team up that's at star hyphen gazing uk forward slash diary here's what it looks like and you can change the view to uh, see what's visible what's happening up in the sky any events that are going on and any anniversaries of space flight missions etc etc that might have happened as well so they're gradually going on there as we get through so that's available to download from star-gazing.co.uk forward slash diary and you can download the team up app and you can carry the diary around with you I'm running the virtual astronomy club, trying to keep astronomy sociable in these uh, challenging times. Uh, we meet on the first and the third Tuesday of every month at 7 p.m. And details of how to join in the astronomy fun are on the virtual astronomy club website, virtual stroke astro stroke club dot com. Everyone's welcome. So come in and join in the fun. So. If you've enjoyed this video please give us a like subscribe to my channel and of course keep safe keep well and keep looking up thank you